In the last video, we looked at getting uh, the database developer application, in this case, Oracle SQL developer, connected to the database server. And we were able to do that. Now we're going to take a look at writing a web application using the MVC design pattern. And the MVC stands for Model View Controller. And the model is just a Java class that holds all of the detail for the, a particular record in the database. The controller does all the heavy lifting. So it will do, uh, if we're looking at a database example, it will do the CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. And then it will pass information onto the view. And the view is just what is returned to the user, um, either before or after the, uh, the work has been done by the servlet. So we'll take a look at this uh, pattern, uh, a practical look at this pattern uh, as we develop an, an actual database application. So I want to make an app, a database of my friends. And I have sketched out here a sitemap. Uh, so it's kind of got some sample screenshots, what I think some screens might look like. Um, I've tried to incorporate some functionality and some data flow into this as well. Uh, so that it, I can use this to, to go further uh, into my other documents and figure out what, uh, what details I actually need to get working here. So I anticipate that when the application starts, it's going to load up an index.jsp page. Um, and it's going to be kind of an intro page. So it'll have a title on it. There might be an image or two. Um, and there will be a link to view my friends. And when I view my friends, it's going to take me to another page called read.jsp. And on this page, it'll be a table that lists out all of my friends' names, emails, ages, and favorite colors. This page is going to kind of drive the whole site because from here, I can choose to update. And if I update, it'll pick this friend and let me update them. I can delete a friend or I can add a new friend. I get to this page by clicking view all friends on index.jsp. But then if I add a new friend, it will take me to a new page called add.jsp where there's an empty form I can fill out. And when I click add, it's going to return me to this read functionality and the new friend will be a new row on my table. If I wanted to update a friend, I can click update and we will search through the database to find that friend and populate our form with those details. We can make changes as necessary. And then when we click update, it will take us back to this table again and display the updated information. So again, we're back here at this read functionality. Then the other thing I would want to be able to do is to delete my friends. Uh, and so if I click delete, we'll go find that friend in the database, remove that um, row from the database table, and then come back to this read.jsp and display an updated table with that record gone, with that friend not being displayed. So I'm going to uh, need to create a database, uh, create a table uh, of these friends. These looks like pretty good details for database um, uh, fields. Uh, so I can put those uh, in there, populate those in there. Um, but I am missing a primary key, and if I think about this from a database term, I can have multiple people with the same uh, first names or the same names. I could potentially have multiple people with the same email address. Um, if it's like a family email address and the husband, the wife, and the kids all use that same email address, age is not unique and favorite color is not unique. So I need a unique way to find every uh, individual record in my database, so I'll have to deal with that primary key. Uh, and I'll probably just make it an auto incrementing integer. So let's take a look at what the database diagram might look like. Here I've got a friends table and that friends table will have a primary key called friend ID. And again, that's just going to be an auto incrementing integer. So every time I add a new row to the database, I'm just going to pick the next number and populate that field. There will not be duplicates, so it will be a good thing to use for this primary key. Then I'll have a database field named friend name, 
and it'll just be a var car and I'll allow 50 spaces for it. Email address, same thing. Age will be another integer. Uh, in Oracle database types, integer is a synonym for number 38. Uh, and then finally, favorite color, and again, it'll just be another var car with 50 spaces. So I'm going to make this, uh, make my database look like this. Table, primary key, fields. So here's my SQL to create a table. I'm going to create a table named friends. It's going to have the field friend ID and the data type, friend name and the data type, email address, age, favorite color, all with their data types. I'm going to set the prime the constraint for a primary key. of friend ID. And when I execute the SQL, I can see it's working. And after the script is run, I can see that the table was created. If I come over here and refresh, I can see my table. And if I click into edit the table, I can see that it's the primary key. I could also choose to not allow nulls on any of these if I wanted to do so. Okay, so now that the database is created, I need to work on getting this friend ID to be automatic um, and uh, uh, auto, an auto incrementing integer and to get that to happen automatically. So I need to create a new sequence. And this is my SQL to create a new sequence, sequence in Oracle. Create sequence, then the name of the sequence. And I did a friendly name here, so friends, references the table, uh, auto increment. What value do we want to start with? We want to start with one and we want to increment by one. And this was created. And now if I look in sequences, I can see it's here. And now that I have my friends table created and I have my sequence created, I'm going to insert some data into the database. So my SQL is insert into the table, field ID friends, friend name, the values, and these come in the same order that these do. So I'm going to use that new auto increment that I just created, that new sequence, the dot next val. Then I'm going to add the value for friend name the value for email address, the value for age, and the value for favorite color. And I get one row inserted. and I get another row inserted. Now if I were to come up here and look at my table, I can refresh it. I'm on the data tab and I can see that my ID, uh, that sequence is working. It's putting them in uh, auto incrementing integer. Sorry, right here, auto incrementing integer. Uh, friend name, everything looks great. Do notice that the database tables don't have any weird characters, no spaces or anything like that. It's just words, uh, camel case or underscores, and the same thing for the table uh, or the uh, the field names. 
no spaces in there. It'll cause you a lot of problems in databases. So now that I have this working, I need to create a trigger so that whenever a row is inserted into the friends table, that the friends auto increment is triggered and inserts the ID. So let's work on getting that. So here's my SQL to create a trigger, create a replace trigger. This is the name of the trigger. And again, I've tied it to that table name friends underscore trigger before an insert on that table name friends for each row I want to execute this command friends auto increment dot next val And then when I refresh, I can see that my friends trigger is now present. So now whenever I insert data into the friends table, this trigger should see that on this next row on the insert, uh, it needs to execute the sequence, the friends auto incrementing next val sequence uh, and place it in that friend ID field. So now my SQL can omit the friend ID because the trigger will automatically detect it and insert that for us. So now I'm inserting just a friend name, email address, age and favorite color into the friends table. These fields, I want to insert this data. Ben goes with friend name, this goes with email address, this goes with age, and this goes with favorite color. So let's execute this. And we get one row inserted. Let me just stick another one in there quickly. And we get another row inserted. If we want to look at the data, make sure we're on the data tab. And I can see that the trigger is triggering the sequence and the sequence is sticking the number in there. So it appears as the database um, is set up and working and accepting data correctly. 